So we've got some new information. A couple of videos have been released explaining how the variable valve timing system works and the cooling system works in the new 23 CVOs. So I wanted to jump in and show you what I've found. First of all, I'm gonna show you where I found these videos and I also put the link in the description to get you right there. So this is the Harley Davidson service harleydavidson.com information page. This has been out for a couple of years now. It's an electronic uh, portal that allows you to get things like your owner's manual for your bike, but it also will uh, offer you to rent like your service manual. So you can rent service manuals for a period of time and they give you updated information about your bike. So recall information and any updated uh, owner's manual information, you'll find it here. It's important though, you really can't unlock the site unless you create a login. So if you look on this page, you have an option here to register. So if you click register and you agree to the terms, you can choose to be an independent operator, an independent operator employee or an individual. So when I signed up for my account, I used the individual option. Okay, so once we go back, I already got my login. So if you notice here, there is no individual login button, which is rather confusing. So I always use the independent operator login. That seems to work for me with my uh, individual login. Okay, so once you're logged in, um, you have a lot more options than if you just proceed without a login. So I encourage you to set up an account. So we're gonna first of all select here, it says select the vehicle, enter the VIN, which you could put your VIN in and you get the information specific to your bike. But if you also uh, go to the drop down, you can say Harley Davidson 1981 to current, and we'll pick CVO. And then look, we have the, uh, the uh, street glide and the road glide are listed here. So we'll pick the road glide and we'll do fine. And that's gonna produce information that is relevant to the bike. So you can see you've got that selected here. On the left hand side, you have the owner's manual. And right now the owner's manual is not out here. They're offering the maintenance schedule for the 23s, but there is no owner manual for a uh, CVO just yet. Um, the software files are out here. So you can see there's an update to the infotainment system already. That's out there. I covered that uh, a bit in my last video. And then uh, subscriptions. So if you want to buy uh, options to uh, the service manual, you can purchase that here. And they give you uh, different levels or different lengths of time of which you have access to that information. So you can purchase a minimum of a week and a maximum of a year. So if you're gonna purchase a bike and own the service manual as you should, it's probably still a better value to just purchase the paper manual but the electronic manual has some real advantages, right? First of all, it's electronic, it's searchable, and you don't get your dirty fingerprints all over it. So you can rent it up to one year. But let's go back here, let's go to videos. And if we look on the right side, they've got a few videos out here. So we've got uh, CBO and Street Glide, infotainment, and then the uh, uh, calibration, uh, temporary wires, uh, wire colors, and uh, essential tools, a couple different ones out here. We're gonna go to the training videos. Actually, I'm sorry, let's go to the re repair videos. So we now have uh, some more options. We have coolant system overview, a technical powertrain overview, and then how to aim your highlight, et cetera, and then the charging system, steering, be steering head bearing, <laughs> check and adjust, uh, remove air from the coolant system, adjust the rear suspension dampening, the, set up the suspension preload dampening, and then we have those videos on the infotainment system I showed you in my last video. So if we take a look here, we're, we're kind of interested in the powertrain. Let's look at the variable valve timing first. Here we go. So we click on that, and away we go. The 121 VVT system is neatly packaged in the cam compartment and is of a similar design to the Revolution Max VVT engine. The proven base design has been applied in the automotive sector for over a decade and was downsized in partnership with Borg Warner for use on a Harley-Davidson pushrod engine. Let us start by reviewing the parts. 
Starting at the left, there is a new assembled camshaft with different lobe profiles and a redesigned outboard journal. The cam support plate is the same. The compact phaser is integrated into the cam drive sprocket. The cam is driven off the crankshaft with the same sprocket used on previous models. There is a timing wheel with slots that facilitates position indication by means of a new cam position sensor. The center bolt secures the phaser to the cam while also serving as the oil control valve for oil distribution to the phaser. The center bolt is actuated by a solenoid mounted to the cam cover. The cam cover is new. So now that we've named the parts, let's take a look at the oil flow through the system. One of the benefits of this VVT design is that it uses low oil pressure and requires very little makeup oil to function. Oil is pressurized by the oil pump, which is fed to the cam support plate. Oil is distributed through drillings and the cam support plate to feed the cam journal. Oil flows into the end of the cam through oiling holes. That oil has passed to the center bolt oil valve. As the solenoid actuates the center bolt valve, oil is distributed to the phaser. Inside the phaser, there is a rotor and an outer housing that rotate relative to each other. The relative rotation occurs by cam torque actuation. Cam torque actuation is when the cam rotates back, when valve spring force is applied when going up the cam lobe resulting in less cam advance, or alternately. The cam has a tendency to move forward when valve spring force is applied coming off the cam lobe resulting in more advance. The degree by which they rotate is controlled hydraulically by filling and emptying chambers separated by sealing veins. The center bolt valve directs more oil in the trailing chambers and less into the leading chambers to advance timing. Alternately, the center bolt valve directs less oil to the trailing chamber and more into the leading chamber to reduce timing advance. This balance of oil between chambers allows for an infinite range of micro-adjustments in real time within 20 degrees of cam rotation, which is 40 degrees of engine rotation. Controls of the system are simple and reliable. The cam position sensor provides constant position feedback to the ECM, which commands the control solenoid based on all the other system inputs. How about that? Interesting. So a combination of manual and one cam position sensor. So fairly simple design using oil pressure to uh, move the oil from one side to the other side to advance or retard the uh, timing. Uh, interesting to say the least. The question that we all have is, how reliable will it be? Um, I don't know, right? They're using oil to flow through that little uh, cam sensor, that secondary cam sensor. They're pushing oil through that, and then they're pushing oil in a cam to move from side to side. So we'll say we had a lot of issues with oil pressure and the uh, oil pump initially. So those were resolved. Um, and it, it implies here you need very low pressure for this system to work. So we'll find out, but wow, a, a neat design, I will say. And very mechanical, should be reliable in that sense. There's no computer really involved, just the, the one cam position sensor. All right, let's move on and take a look at the cooling system. The new cooling system utilizes a coolant and deionized water mixture circulated in a serial flow pattern via an electric coolant pump. Rather than flowing coolant in parallel to both heads at once as on previous systems, the new system flows coolant first to the rear cylinder head, then to the front cylinder head, and then to a frame-mounted radiator. Let us look a little closer at the new system function. When cold, the coolant pump is off. Coolant will not circulate until the coolant temperature sensor reaches a prescribed temperature value, or the engine is running for 150 seconds. When either condition is met, the coolant pump is activated to circulate coolant. The BCM-controlled electric coolant pump circulates coolant to the rear cylinder head through a single soft-molded coolant hose. Coolant flows through an S-shaped cooling passage within the head that targets the area near the exhaust valves, the hottest parts of the head. Coolant flows to the front head through a short connecting hose between the heads. Coolant flows through the front head around the exhaust valves as done on the rear. Coolant flows from the front head through a molded coolant hose. Coolant enters the top of the radiator where the coolant temperature is measured by a coolant temperature sensor. 
The coolant flows through the radiator from the right side to the left side of the motorcycle. An electric coolant fan is used to supplement cooling airflow when needed. The radiator exchanges heat from the coolant to ambient air through the cooling fins. The radiator is connected to an integrated fill tube and coolant overflow reservoir at the top on the left side and the coolant pump at the bottom on the left side. When coolant is still relatively cold, the system is not pressurized enough to vent coolant into the overflow reservoir through the pressure cap. Coolant enters the pump and the cycle continues. As heat is added to the coolant from the heads, the coolant temperature rises. As it does, the coolant expands. The coolant reservoir is equipped with a traditional style radiator cap that allows expanded coolant to vent and collect into the coolant overflow bottle, then draws it back into the system under vacuum as it cools. Molded coolant hoses are connected with barb fittings and secured with different types of hose clamps, minimizing potential leaks while improving ease of service. Always replace clamps with the approved OEM clamps when servicing. Well, there it is, the cooling system revealed on the new 121 cubic inch engine, Milwaukee 8. So I'd say it's a, a nice design, right? Really compact. Uh, it focuses on cooling the heads, which is the hot part. That's where all the combustion takes place. And they start at the back cylinder and move their way to the front. So you pick up a lot of heat from the rear cylinder and maybe have a little bit of cooling for the front. And then you run it through the radiator, which is really small and uh, then the cycle repeats. And then your reservoir, right? Your reservoir is just that small tube off to the side along the frame rail. Really well done design. The question is, how well, it how well will it work, right? Will it keep that motor cool uh, or will people complain that it runs really hot? We shall soon see as these bikes are about to ship. So I encourage you to join me on my journey to purchase one of these bikes and join me next time in the friction zone.